can we all agree that higher literacy rates, lower rates of delinquency, and better intergroup relations would improve our society? In the wake of the Me Too and Black Lives Matter movements, our society is long overdue for a moral reckoning. So I ask you to join me on this journey as we radically reimagine preschool classrooms that could have the potential to circumvent the issues that plague our society today. First, I want to walk you through the pedagogy of progressivism. Progressivism was an educational movement that emerged in the late 19th century. And it was really a term that was used to differentiate itself from the traditional Euro-American curriculum of the time. The traditional curriculum of the time, basically all they wanted to do was prepare their students for the university level, and they believed that students were just these empty vessels that we could deposit knowledge into. In contrast, progressivism believed in active experience. The hallmarks of progressivism are as follows. Progressivism believes in educating the whole child, rather than focusing on the content or the teacher. They believe that education is experiential because we construct our understandings of concepts as we experience them. And finally, they believe that education is active, not passive. John Dewey was one of the foremost proponents of the progressive movement. He really championed this idea of educating the whole child because he believed that schools weren't just a place that students should go to learn content knowledge, but rather a place that they should go and learn how to live. And then they would emerge into society as whole persons who could actively engage in their democracy. As the movement evolved in the 80s, 90s, and early 21st century, Nell Noddings became one of the foremost proponents. And she really explored the question, well, what does it mean to educate the whole child? And she focused on happiness. She believes that our current education system is actually undermining our democracy because it's just preparing kids to take standardized tests and their barometer for success is attaining a high paying job. Instead, she believes that we need to create policies that support students and their teachers to act as whole persons who embrace all of their emotions. Emotions such as happiness. She also believes that policies need to be created to support the school as a whole community a community that's founded on trust. So, how do we do this? I believe that we do this through social and emotional learning. Social and emotional learning refers to a broad range of social, emotional, and behavioral skills for a child. Skills such as empathy, emotional literacy, and perspective taking. Social and emotional learning, SEL for short, is analyzed by an adult's acknowledgement or testing of their social and emotional competence. And this competence manifests in children in things such as high self-esteem, a display of patience, or problem-solving skills. There are a myriad of SEL interventions in place in preschools today, and while they may differ in their theoretical approaches, all of the effective ones have three common themes. First, that there is targeted support for both the children and the teachers. Interventions also focus on skills that are strongly associated with their desired outcome, and three, they are age appropriate and play-based. Now the first social and emotional intervention I wanna walk you through is called PATHS. PATHS stands for Promoting Alternative Thinking Strategies. It's a classroom-based curriculum that's delivered over the course of one academic year and delivers 30 lesson plans that develop the child's social and emotional competence and reduces their problem behaviors and in turn improves their literacy rates. Studies about students who went through the PATHS program have found small to large effects on improving the child's social and emotional competence as well as their literacy rates. Additionally, statistically significant effects have found a literacy rates of the children have improved and lasted into the elementary school years. For example, their vocabulary improved both in the schools with the teachers and at home with the parents. So just as the SEL interventions can have long-term effects at the classroom level, they can also have long-term effects on the community level. Second step is another classroom-based curriculum that begins in preschool and carries on through the junior year of high school. It offers interactive lessons that develop a child's empathic behaviors and their social problem-solving skills. Students who go through the second step program have been found to have lower rates of drug use, aggression, and delinquency. Additionally, a large review titled The Economic Value of Social and Emotional Learning 
found that students who went through the Second Step program, for every 100 student participants who went through that program, $388,000 was returned to that community. So as we can see, social and emotional learning interventions have really important effects, such as improving literacy rates and lowering rates of delinquency. But what I'm really interested in is this idea of empathy and how skills such as understanding one another and perspective taking under this paradigm of empathy can improve our intergroup relations. So what is empathy? Empathy refers to experience that is both emotional and cognitive, either because the two are intertwined or because the emotions result directly from the cognitive state of perspective taking. Research in the field of empathy almost exclusively focuses on empathic sorrow, but I'm more interested in empathic joy. Empathic joy has been defined by Adam Smith as an interest in the fortune of others, and he renders his happiness necessary to him, although he derives nothing of it but except for the pleasure of seeing it. And more recently, it's been defined by psychologists as the responsiveness to another's positive emotional disclosures. So a recent study really gave me hope about the potential for empathic joy in classroom interventions. Although the study was targeted at older students in schools across the country, I believe that their findings show great potential for empathic joy-oriented SEL interventions at the preschool level. The study was conducted by Todd Patinsky and Matthew Montoya, and it was an evaluative study of white teachers and it evaluated their attitudes towards and their empathy for their predominantly ethnic minority students. They did this through teacher self-evaluation forms, empathy assessment inventories, and classroom observations. The study found that indeed empathic joy can improve intergroup relations, whether that's between the students and the teachers or within the students' peer groups. Perhaps the most promising finding was the virtue of empathic joy is acting as a catalyst. Just as we can have vicious cycles, we can have virtuous cycles, in which reciprocal causes and events produce increasingly favorable results. In the intergroup context, this meant that unprompted compassion or pro-social behavior within an intergroup acted as a catalyst to produce more altruism within the group as a whole. I believe that empathic joy-oriented SEL interventions at the preschool level is the catalyst that our society so desperately needs to produce a society of more caring, more understanding, and more empathic democratic citizens.